Welcome to the Cathedral of College Basketball that opens its doors just twice a year to the high school ranks. It's the boys' championship, Roman Catholic against Newman Goretti, a familiar tale. Two teams that have seen each other many, many times in this very game. My name's Bob Long, alongside me, Huck Palmer, and boy, just witnesses, two of us here, to what will be a spectacular atmosphere. Us and about 9,000 of our closest friends. Sold out, no walk-up tickets, and the reason is because these two programs have a history that goes beyond this city, goes beyond this state. These are national programs. Huck, your thoughts on this one tonight? Well, I mean, we have uh, it's the t eight, tenth time they have uh, played each other since 2000, with Newman holding a five to four advantage. Um, games have been pretty close, except for one contest. Uh, but other, I, I expect something close tonight. Uh, uh, these teams are really uh, evenly matched, and, and, and it should be. It's, if it's anything like that girls' game, Bob, we're, we're in for a great night. And we are underway. Newman Goretti is in white. Roman Catholic is in purple. Here's Rob Wright the third. A corner three for Amir Williams. That's a little long. Brought down by number two, Jermai Stewart Herring. Joined in the starting lineup by Anthony Finkley, Xavier Brown, Sharif Jackson, and Eric Oliver Bush. Early really turnover there, Bob, and that's what Newman does well. I mean, they only, they only turn it over eight and a half uh, times a game, and they force about 14 and a half. Yeah, they have the biggest advantage in that stat in the entire Catholic League. For Newman Goretti, Kafik Myers, Rob Wright, Amir Williams, Sultan Adewale, and Bruce Smith as the student section for Newman Goretti will serenade him with here throughout the evening. Amir Williams, that three is good, and that's his shot, Huck. He's not shy from the corner. He hit five of those triples from the same exact spot on either side of the floor against West Catholic in the semifinal. Xavier Brown, he's headed to St. Joe's University next year along with Anthony Finkley, his soon-to-be head coach. That's a five-second violation going the other way. And that's what Kafeef Myers does well. He really puts a lot of pressure on the ball. Tough South Philly guard, old school. Mentioned Brown and Billy Lang, head coach of St. Joe's, sitting about three seats to our left and a row up. He's getting the good one, Bob. Kafeef Myers. Got a little bit of the injury bug throughout the course of the year. He's an excellent guard who can turn it on. Sharif Jackson, that's what Jackson does. big. Excuse me, Bob, but that's what Jackson does well. He, he'll block about two shots a game. He gets a lot of deflections. Had seven steals in the semifinals. Again, here's the help, right? Look at this replay here, and Sharif Jackson with him the whole way. Myers doesn't shoot it great from beyond the arc, but can be that conductor along with this guy, Rob Wright. Xavier Brown tries to get to the hoop, slides his way to the cup. He's done that all year, Bob. The first, first three years, he was more of a distributor, a facilitator. He still does that, but he scores a lot more now. Rob Wright, no good. That's great defense by Eric Oliver Bush, arguably Roman Catholic's best on-ball defender. Stuart Herring hangs and hits through some contact. Very methodical player. Takes his time. He's very deliberate, but when he gets off the ground, he goes. Roman Catholic stays man-to-man -man defensively, switching. Kafik Myers, hits good. That's a great early sign for the Saints. If Myers can knock down two or three of those, that's gonna bode well. Two triples early on for the Newman Goretti Saints, coached by Carl Aragale. Catholic League all-time leader with 12 PCL titles. Looking for his 13th here today. Amir Williams drives his way into the body. Here's Sultan Adewale, the young man from London, England. For my money, nobody plays harder in this league than Sultan Adewale. He's relentless off the glass, the offensive glass especially, and he's always around the ball. He picks balls up off the floor and gets them right back off the glass in no time. Tough for us to see, but if Amir Williams did indeed reestablish himself along the baseline coming back in bounds, a great job then completed the assist to the weak side block. Corner three, Anthony Finkley, it's good. Finkley leads Roman in three points made this year. He's, he's shooting about 39%. Pretty good clip for him. He'll be playing in this building at the college level. That one halfway down for Kafik Myers. What a look. You reward the big man running the floor, and it's Sharif Jackson for two. Roman leads by one. Rob Wright. Oliver Bush. 
And Xavier Brown kicked it. Took his eye off the ball there, I think, for a second, and uh, he squandered an opportunity. Roman Catholic so good in transition. Of course, that one a bit anecdotal in nature, not something you expect to happen very often. They are an extremely efficient team. 52% from the field, 37 from three, 70, 77 from the line. And I think one of Chris McNesby and Roman Catholic's best half-court defensive teams that we've seen. Look at him right now, going into his zone look. They'll go into and out of defenses, Huck, from possession to possession, they not even a, out of timeouts. They have a lot of length. Uh, they, they're, they're always around the ball. They get their hands, a lot of deflections. Adewale sets the ball screen. A great look for Bruce Smith. Newman's going to get their threes up. They shoot about 23 per game, Bob. Finkley. Did lean and elbow in, wasn't called. Xavier Brown, there's the follow. It's Jeremiah Stewart Herring. That's what I was talking about earlier. It catches you off guard. His athleticism is uh, sneaky. Roman Catholic stays in that zone defense. Chris McNesby, he's a chess player. He'll go into and out of defenses. He'll show you a look you haven't seen. A foul will keep it right here. It goes against Stuart Herring. Good job by Bruce Smith getting to the glass there. He needs to do little things like that to contribute. Neither one of these teams are going to play too many players. They'll, they'll, they'll go five for long stretches, probably play a six uh, without serious foul trouble. I don't expect too much substitution. I thought he was shooting that off the glass too, Bob. And now Adewale gets the touch. Double doesn't come. He fades away. And Amir Williams rises high but couldn't finish. Xavier Brown glides to the hoop. Count it. And one. Terrific player. He's been doing it for four years. He's, he's, he's just the engine for them. That's a big time finish by Xavier Brown. Playing in front of his future coach. Playing on a floor that he'll play at least in Big Five play while at St. Joseph's University. Good free throw shooter too, Bob. Shooting 80% on the year. Bob Long, Huck Palmer. Penn Sports Network helping us out with the production SFBN with the stream. Amir Williams. There's Kafik Myers. Tiptoes along the baseline. How did he find Rob Wright? He is so good with the body control. Count it and one. And it slithers his way through the lane there. That's what he does. He could score at all three levels. Gets to the rim. Floaters galore. He could hit a three, a three from distance too. It's a great find. Keep an eye on where the feet are. It was outside the lane. But I think you got Rob Wright slowing down the body and rising high rather than going horizontal there. And I think the soft contact could have been a no call, but I certainly don't think a charge. Always a tough call at this level, at any level actually, basketball. Roman Catholic will pull this back. Jemai Stewart Herring got Bruce Smith in the air and they'll reset in the half court. Full house, not a seat to be had. Finkley for Brown. 2.22 to go, first quarter. Exactly what we expected this one to be. Right. Lost the basketball, got it back. Amir Williams. That's well long. He's not ultra comfortable from the top of the key area. He likes the corners. Contact. No foul call, and Bruce Smith will keep it in. Great look here by Myers. But Jermai Stewart Herring was there. Xavier Brown with nobody rebounding. And so Adewale really with no contest. Both teams running a little quick, but that's also the DNA. It is. It's more so for Newman this year. Roman will be play more deliberate style usually. And there's a foul that will be called. Will this go against Finkley or Stewart Herring? That's going to be the second against Jermai Stewart Herring. Another look 
First of all, Oliver Bush, so good there on that steal. A little bit unlucky to not come up with it. But that's why he's the best on-ball defender. He causes a lot of havoc on the defensive end. Gets a lot of over a block a game, a couple of assists, a couple of steals a game. A ton of deflections this year. Robert Cottrell entered the game for our Stewart hiring. Can shoot a little bit. Has 19 threes on, uh, made threes on the year. Uh, and some limited time. It's a really good look for Amir Williams. Exactly how you play against that zone, get someone to the center. Really nobody crashed on him, Hawk. No, and uh, you know, he had a real clean look there. And he's 6'6", six, six, he can shoot over people. Now Jackson gets a touch, pulling Salt not a while away from the lane. You mentioned Robert Cottrell just into the game. That is about as deep as Roman Catholic will go. The seventh guy would be Will Felder. We rarely see him. The big man with some skill. He has a lot of skill. He plays below the rim, but he's really savvy with the, both hands. Gets to the box with rather ease. Roman stays in that zone. Kafik Myers along the baseline. Salt Natawale is fouled. Jackson Hockey really affected that initial lob, but Salt Natawale working harder than everyone else. You have to, yes, you have to game plan for that. He is going to go to the glass. He's going to go hard to the glass. He gets about five offensive rebounds a game between his, uh, he averages 10 rebounds per game, and a lot of them are on the offensive glass. Against West Catholic in the semifinals, he was 8 for 10. I don't think he made a shot or took a shot other than the 1-3 outside, uh, outside of three feet. Salt Natawale, 62% from the foul line this year. Could be a little bit of Achilles heel for, uh, for the Saints. They're, they're about 63, 64% as a team. They were 12 for 23 in the semifinal and almost came back to bite them. That was an overtime classic against West Catholic. Aren't they all classics here, Bob? They really are, but that one in particular as a last second putback sent us to overtime. An absolutely incredible contest, but Newman Gretti a deserving winner. Roman Catholic was down 11 points late in the second quarter to Archbishop Wood. You flip a coin and this could be West Catholic versus Archbishop Wood, but it's the two stalwart programs in the Catholic League going at it again. And right at the horn, it wouldn't go for Anthony Finkley. Decent look for Finkley there. After one, it is 16 to 11, Roman Catholic. And we'll tell you a little bit about Chris McNesby because it's an interesting story. McNesby, a guy who has coached for Roman Catholic for a number of years here, but not all in succession. Spent some time with his family, walked away from Roman Catholic for a few years. All that they did in his stead was Matt Griffin came in and won two Catholic League titles himself. Now Matt Griffin pursuing his own college coaching career and doing a great job at Florida Gulf Coast with Pat Chambers. So there was a vacancy. Well, in steps Chris McNesby, who won titles in 2015 and 2016, and now is looking for his first title since returning two years ago. Yes, he lost a heartbreaker last year to Newman in the semifinals. And uh, you know, Chris is one of the good guys in the league. I, I, get, to, I get to interact with many of the, all the coaches since I do the stats. And uh, I'm always a couple times a week talking to Chris via text. Really, really friendly guy. Really open, it shares a lot of information. Um, really appreciative of, of the things that people do for him, like you, Bob, and, and the telecast, myself doing the stats. Uh, great guy to have a conversation with. Newman Goretti always has, you could argue, the best cheer squad in the entire Catholic League. I mean, that is an enormous dance team. That's a ton of a very talented yeah. young women. No doubt about that. They certainly, have, they certainly have the most. That's right. They certainly, I think there's 50 of them out there. And, of course, the student section has been really impressive for Newman Goretti as well, as it always is. doesn't seem to matter that they're here every year, every other year. They always represent their squad. Always, always. You got those, uh, I see a lot of those South Philly crazies over there. And, um, you know, some of them graduate, and then, then others, they, just, they step in and take their place. <laughs> Here's a look at Chris McNesby, head man for Roman Catholic. Winner of a state title last year. In fact, the semifinal matchup between Roman Catholic and Archbishop Wood was a rematch of the 6A state title game, which... Again, they could meet one another for what would be the third time 
in the 6A. Absolutely. State Last year, tournament. the Cahill Lights were led, led by uh, Daniel Skillens now at Cincinnati and uh, Khalil Farmer at over, I think, Lee Hofstra. There's an open three for Anthony Finkley. Won't go. Three good looks early for Finkley here. Um, has yet to connect from distance. Right, and there's the steal up ahead of the floor. Xavier Brown, count the buckets. Transition points for the KLites. Newman's got to uh, limit those. Boy, like a safety running that one down, but a little too late on the block attempt. Yes, Myers gave it a valiant effort. Roman Catholic, they've found something that they've liked defensively. A zone defense to slow down Newman Garetti. And to this point, it's been successful. Deep three for Kafik Myers. Big rebound by Sultan Adewale. There he is again. But gave it away. And now they're slipping on the floor. A timeout called by Chris McNesby. Johnny on the spot from the purple bench. You're going to need a few of those scrappy plays getting on the floor to win a, win a game like this. This is Palestra basketball right here. It's hot. There's condensation on the floor. They're going to do their best to mop it up. But when you get 9,000 people in here, good luck with that. It's part of the charm. It absolutely is. And these, uh, these mop people here, they were really busy last week in the semifinals. They were here quite a few times. You know, in the regular season matchup, Bob, uh, Newman won at home 62-60. to They played that game without Robert Wright, you know, averaging 22 points a game. And, and uh, his younger uh, half-brother, Steph Stefan Ashley Wright, stepped up with 15 points that game. And Myers was tremendous with 16 points, 9 rebounds, and 8 assists. Yeah, but, uh, again, anytime you talk about a game in the regular season, there's only so much you can take from that. Yes, they didn't have... Robert Wright, but Roman Catholic, they've gotten a lot better, and so has Newman Garetti. Also, a little bit of a different venue. Each classic's in their own right. Newman Garetti High School in South Philadelphia, one of the best places to watch a game in this town. And as you said, the stakes are certainly higher. What a play by Kafik Myers. Somehow it got inbounds and uh, inside. Newman Garetti now the active hands. Yeah, Newman, Newman these, these, these five on the floor, these five starters play a lot. They, they have a Tremendous amount of deflections. A lot of that's due to a lot of the minutes they play, but they are active. They're, a very, they're plus 140 on the year, Bob, in turnovers. So they've committed 140 less than their opponents. Remarkable number. Jackson catches at a good spot, a willing passer. Robert Cottrell, that one might have been tipped. And what a follow, Anthony Finkley. Finkley read that well. He saw that was going to be short from the get-go, and he went right in, he timed it well, and he laid it right off the glass. Williams might have gotten a fingertip on that. It was very close. Nine-point lead, largest for Roman Catholic. And the Kaolites have stayed in that zone all night. Saints haven't had a bucket in a while. I think their last point came off a foul shot. Good look for Kafik Myers. And Oliver Bush just snatched that right off the rim. Now Roman Catholic, have they shown the pension to slow it down at times over the course of the year? They're adept at it too. They're, 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 they can play a lot of different styles. And they run a lot of good stuff in a, in a half court set. You could argue the most complete team in the Catholic League this year. I would agree with that. And it'll stay here after the deflection out of bounds. Roman Catholic, in addition to that turnover advantage you talked about, also out-rebounding their opponents by eight caroms per contest. Outscoring opponents by 20 per game, giving up just 46 points, and you can start to see why. And their offensive defensive efficiency numbers, which is a stat I keep uh, based off 100 possessions, is astronomical. They're plus 35. Roman Catholic in purple and Newman Garetti in white. It's a nine point lead for Roman Catholic. Finkley, great lob inside. Somehow doesn't go down for Oliver Bush. That's a heck of an offensive set there, Huck. It was, and Finkley can really see the floor. He sees over, he's, he's big. He's a really good passer. The double comes on the baseline. Cottrell and Finkley nowhere to go for right. Strong body too, he's really worked on his body over the years. You know, he started out at West Catholic his first two years. 
and he's really re uh, reformed his body since he's left there. That's where the ball's got to go. Sharif Jackson too strong defensively, but get the ball to the center of that zone. Cottrell rises and hits. And Cottrell really contributed in the semifinal game. He scored 10 points off the bench for them, uh, and, and he's, he's contributing already here tonight. Carl Aragel less than pleased with the no call on the other end. Those folks very happy. Here's another look at Cottrell, and that's good body control there. Don't go too deep into the trees, huh? Play off two feet, get to a spot you're comfortable with, little teardrop, and those folks will go nuts. No, no need to. Uh, pretty good with the ball, Cottrell, all year. He's, you know, he gives him some perimeter scoring, and now he's showing a little, another facet of his game there, getting into the lane. The floater, the floater game is, you know, a lot of kids are starting to get that down uh, in this day and age. The two guys are in that huddle, actually. Rob Wright and Kafik Myers, two guys that can hit the teardrop, the pull up, as well as anybody. And I think that's something they're going to need to do because the softest spot of the zone in most cases is going to be right around that 15, 12 foot from the basket line, right? In the middle of that zone, that can create a real hub and spoke type of situation. Hey, if nobody comes to you, you can drive, attack, or, or take the shot from there. But a lot of times, multiple guys will cr crash. That's where the kick-out opportunities will present themselves. Yeah, the Saints are going to have to try to get some easy buckets here, and typically that'll come from Adewale inside. Um, not, not so much on uh, deliveries and, and post-ups and spin moves, but on putbacks and stuff. But they're going to have to create some turnovers, get out in the open court, get a, get a few layups. Roman has a lot of length, too, so it's hard to shoot over this zone. Great, Great luck. There's the foul call. It's a late whistle. And there's certainly contact there, but remember what we just said. Carl Aragel had something to say to the official to let him know he wants some of those calls, and the whistle certainly comes there. Carl's got a lot of experience over there. 572 career wins, not too shabby. Really good officiating crew here tonight. Steve Ockenhaus, Daryl Sterling, and Alex Landis. You don't get to do this game as a Catholic League official unless you've had a really nice year. No doubt about that. I'm pretty sure some of the coaches have input on this, uh, you know, off of a list of the guys that, that, they, that they consider. At least they used to. Ottawale, three of four from the strike. Jermai Stewart Herring, who got a touch, one of the keys to this Roman Catholic team this year. A transfer, and has really been the guy to abet and be the Robin to the Batman of Xavier Brown, who got into the lane and had it poked away. Ashley Wright's out there now. He's a very good defensive player. For, for being a freshman, he's really good on that end of the court. Brown nearly lost it. Such patience here from the Kaolites. Xavier Brown couldn't hit it for three. Now Kafik Myers doesn't have numbers, but an in-rhythm three, it's good. And there he is, Stefan Ashley Wright, the freshman and the half-brother of Rob Wright. There's nothing about this stage that's gonna stop him from taking shots. We talked about it a lot in the girls' game. There's an ebb and there's a flow to these games. And a foul is called along the baseline. Jermai Stewart Herring. Huck in a semifinal contest between Roman and Archbishop Wood. I think it's fair to say that Archbishop Wood was outplaying Roman Catholic. But the difference that allowed Roman Catholic to get in shouting distance before the break was the work of Jeremiah Stewart Herring. Four offensive rebounds in that first half last week. It did. Wood really had control until the last minute and a half. And, they, and I, you know, they went up, they were up 11, and then they cut it to, I believe, four at halftime. And that kind of swung the game. Roman really never looked back in the second half. Though it stayed tight throughout. And that offensive rebound there has a chance to be a big one if they can make good. As Newman Garetti was making their run, can Roman Catholic throw a little dagger back at him? Xavier Brown, great oh. luck, and it's Eric Oliver Bush. Looked like the ball almost slipped out his hand a little bit there, but he but he guided it to Oliver Bush, who, who 
But when he has the ball there, there's, there's no denying those two points. Amir Williams brought down by Cottrell. Cottrell's a tough kid. Played at Gratz last year. There's the lob and a little too high for Oliver Bush. Looking to bring the house down, huh? <laughs> yes, they were. A little too high. Had a little steam on it, too. Two minutes and 15 seconds to play. Ends of quarters and halves, very, very important. Let's go one of two directions here. Newman Goretti looking to cut this lead. Rob Wright, that one barely drew the iron, but they're going to get away with it. Yeah, they had, uh, in the semifinals against West, uh, Wright started all, he wasn't really looking for his shots early, but he was distributing. He had six assists in the first half, and uh, I think four of them led to, to four corner threes by his teammate Smith and, uh, and Williams. He's going to have to score if they're going to win this game now. Newman Goretti is the one seed in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Here's Wright. You know, gets, much gets talked about Brown's offensive game, uh, uh, being a point general and all that, but he's a great defensive player. Yeah, it might have been a little soft on that one. Now, listen, you put that off arm out, you put the official in a really tough spot. You do, and, and he's savvy. He's a savvy player. He felt, the, he felt the contact with the hand, a little bit of a push, probably not hard enough to push him to the ground. He embellished it a little bit, and he got the call. It's a savvy play by a great player. Been doing it for four years. And there's the giveaway. Amir Williams, bring it down. Like I said earlier, Bob, Newman needs, Newman Grady needs a few more of those. Timeout on the floor. It's an official timeout as Kafik Myers, a little banged up after that last defensive possession. But Amir Williams gets the people going. Hopefully Myers is okay. You know, he had some ankle injuries earlier in the year. Hurt his ankle out in Hawaii in a, in a remarkable uh, tournament run by the Saints out there. Get some really good competition. And then he came home, came back, played a game, didn't play a game. was back and forth. Uh, you, you know, you could maybe make a case that they probably should have sat him for, for a couple of weeks to get him, you know, completely healthy. Um, I think he's been healthy the last week or two. I mean, the last couple of weeks, I think he's looked fine when I've seen him play. So I don't know if that's uh, something that's reoccurring there or, or if it's a different, you know, you never know. We'll keep an eye on that. He sits for now. And he seems like he's in a lot of pain. One minute and 17 seconds left. Back to a six point game. And he just lost the basketball. Oliver Bush, good defense there by Ottawale. Rob Wright, Ashley Wright. Too high off the window. Ottawale, no. Sharif Sharif Jackson. Had, yeah, he's having trouble finishing over, uh, over Roman's length. Specifically, Jackson has been there right at his chest every time he's caught the ball in the paint. Strong kid, good timing, good base. Knows how to play defense, knows how to play inside. Only a sophomore, too. Some extended possessions, primarily by Roman Catholic, have led us to this point. Newman Goretti held under 20 through 15 and a half minutes. That's something too, Bob. They average 68 a game. Roman looks to hold for the last shot. Comfortable with that six point cushion and looking to add to it. Not uncommon for these games here at the Pleasure's Final, some of these games to be played in the 50s though. Finkley, the point forward. He'll run the action with five seconds left. Eric Oliver Bush, no good. Down to the final second, good if it goes. And it comes up just a rotation short. After 16 minutes, Roman Catholic and Chris McNesby leads 24 to 18. The Kaolites will retire to the locker room for an albeit very brief halftime discussion. You see the Saints on their way out. Your quick thoughts on what we saw. Well, Newman's trying to find their game offensively. I mean, they're, they're playing hard defensively. Holding Roman to 24 points is, is, a, is a big thing. I, I, think, um, I think Roman may have left some meat on the bone here in this first half. You know, based on the way New the Saints played offense, that, that they should have a, a, maybe a little larger lead. I thought they settled for, for some uh, more threes than they usually take. They only take 15 a game. I bet you they're close to 10 in that first half. 
Uh, so uh, there's going to be some adjustments made at halftime, and then we'll see what team comes down and executes. Bob Long, Huck Palmer. Huck Palmer, the statistician for the Philadelphia Catholic League, and we're thrilled to have him here on the color commentary. A quick break, and then we'll be joined by Josh Verlin of City of Basketball. Love to break it down. Squash, it's an individual sport, uh, and everybody plays it differently. If you think that your way is the only right way to play, then you're sort of stuck in that slump. Other than Egypt, there's no country that really dominates, so there's a wide range of countries that are really successful. I truly believe that to be the best, you need to surround yourself with the best from everywhere. Fan Squash is a place where we all come together, share our ideas, you know, give our feedbacks, and this is a place where, you know, coaches listen and put your feedback into practice. Having players from all over the world, is, it, it's taught me how to think about things differently and how to adjust my coaching and how to become better. And, and I think that the players have uh, reacted in a similar way and, and are stronger because of it. I think the biggest thing for me is the success that, that diversity breeds on this team. Diversity is a huge aspect behind our success as a group. The focus of our program is really bringing the best and the brightest from all over the world and bringing them here to Penn. Everyone brings a different style, because when you're training her, you're playing with some of the best players um, around, the, around the world. We're all different. No one has to do something one way. I see, you know, on a, on a weekly and a monthly basis, players adding to their game because they're learning, learning from their teammates and, and um, you know, teammates who grew up learning the game differently. And Finding ways to compete against players who have different games and try to nullify those skills um, has made me a better player and a, and a better competitor and thinker. It's just so exciting to, to be uh, at practice every single day. Not only do I get the chance to, to train every day with people of different st styles and strengths, but I also get to spend so much time with them off court uh, and educate myself about different cultures, but also get to share my own. My teammates from other parts of the world 100% impact the way that I see the world and the way that uh, we interact on a daily basis. And I think that's how you grow as a person. At the end of the day, it's about finding a way to work together and embrace our, our differences on and off the court. Penn Squash represents what the entire Penn community is all about and it's about diversity. Together we are better as a unit and not as a, as a collection of individuals. Halftime here at the Palestra, Bob Long and Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love joining us again here for a halftime interview. Josh, a tremendous game thus far, one very much hanging in the balance. What were some of the key numbers from the first half? Yeah, absolutely. Roman Catholic shot 11 for 25 from the field, 1 for 11 from 3, uh, hit their only foul shot. Newman Goretti, 6 for 27 from the floor, 3 for 10 from three-point range, 3 of 5 from the foul line. And I think, Bob, I th what was most notable is just two programs that have been here before came out. There was zero acclimation period. I mean, this game started and it was just going. <laughs> and from a standpoint of, of Roman Catholic, right, a team that can play chess with you, right? So they come out man-to-man, -man, okay, Newman's getting some looks. Let's go to a 2-3 zone, and the Saints of Newman Gratty really haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, 18-2 run by Roman was the real game changer between the first and second quarter. And the defense, absolutely, but I think the transition offense is the key for Roman. Xavier Brown, he's been such a good player for the last three years, but I really think he's taken a big step forward this season, and we're seeing it with that assertiveness tonight. And not many teams can say they've held Newman Gratty under 20 points in a 16-minute half. No, not at all. I mean, you know, the shooting numbers speak for themselves. 6 for 27. I'm no math whiz. Uh, certainly under 24%, 25%, something around those lines. Right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's 27%. something. If you can ha hold Newman Garetti in check like that, you're going to have a chance. But yeah. Carl Aragale is a guy, and his team, he's been here so many times. All of a sudden, this junior-laden team, well, they're a veteran because they've been here. They've won. They've won the Triple Crown. Catholic League, district, and state title, they got to run in them in the second half. Oh, absolutely. I mean, certainly the health of Kafik Myers is going to be crucial. What's the status of his ankle? Are they going to have to rely on the freshman Stefan Ashley Wright to play big minutes here in the second half? And how will he step up to the atmosphere if he has to do so? But yeah, I mean, this is a veteran group. We know that Newman Goretti is not done for that, not done today for sure. Um, Curious to see how they handle in the second half. I think one key will be the inside game. We know how good the guards are on both of these teams, and I think Rob Wright will get his in the second half. But a standpoint of Sultan Adewale 
and Sharif Jackson. Jackson has been at the chest of Adewale every time he's caught the ball in the post. And you've seen it's been a challenge for Adewale to finish over top. Yeah, there have not been many guys that have been able to slow down Sultan Adewale the way that Sharif Jackson did here in the first half. You can see the sophomore, the progression he's made on the defensive end from last year. He's ready for this moment. He's done a great job on Adewale so far. Josh, tell us a little bit about what you've seen across the Catholic League all year long. Of course, we'll break this the game down until we'll bl we're blue in the face. But the Catholic League, this is really a culmination this evening of a fantastic year of basketball, some tremendous student athletes that you have the ability to showcase with your writers and your website and everything you guys do. What's been the real nexus of the Catholic League season this year? I think it's really the depth of the league, which is sort of funny to talk about because the teams that are here today are the two that we're used to seeing, right? Newman Goretti, Roman Catholic. And it doesn't show just how good the league was. I mean, we talked all year that the seventh, eighth, ninth best team in the league could have been playing here tonight. And I still stand by that. Even though we ended up with the top two seeds in the league, I really don't think you're seeing the representation of how deep the league was this year. And it just keeps getting deeper and deeper every single season. Yeah, the sixth seed West Catholic had a wide open three that would have put them in this game. It didn't go. The putback sent us to overtime time and we had a classic last Wednesday night but there's a great example a team in West Catholic that three or four games that go the other way they win or they lose in those cases by a possession and there's a difference between being the sixth seed and the two seed. Yeah I mean or you look at a Devon Prep who didn't even make the Catholic League playoffs and yet they're going to be one of the favorites in the 3A state bracket which they're going to be playing for starting next week so it's just the league is so deep you know Archbishop Carroll could have gotten hot and made it here. There's just, you know, there's just so many teams, so many good players, and I think you're just seeing the culmination here of just two teams that have just been through the wars all season long, through the postseason, stuck it out, and now they're here. There are very few league tournaments at the high school or the college level that can boast a venue like this one, and that is really the identity of the venue and the identity of the tournament itself. And I think the Catholic League is along with maybe the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden is one of those leagues on that short list. What is the palestra in these two nights in February? What do they mean to these individuals and to this league as a whole? I mean, I think when you talk about Philadelphia sports, right, there's the Penn Relays, there's the Dad Vale Regatta, there's the Army-Navy game. There's a few things that make this city special. And the Philadelphia Catholic League Championship Night has to be up there with any of those big events that happen in this city every single year. 10,000 people in this building cheering on two high school teams playing you know, on the biggest possible stage in high school basketball in this intense environment. And every year I just I just marvel at these 16, 17 year olds. I mean, we forget they're just kids. They're high school kids playing in this game and the way that they're able to come out and handle this atmosphere is just amazing every year. Well, folks are gonna watch this game, watch this second half. We hope it's a classic, of course. And they're not going to be able to get enough of it after we go off the airwaves. So tell them quickly where they can find written pieces about this contest. Yes, please go to cityofbasketballlove.com. I have to give a shout-out to my incredible staff. We've got Owen McHugh, Joe Santaliquido, and Andrew Robinson here with me tonight. But we've had so many contributors that are, are helping out the site and, and helping us do what we do. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention everybody that's really helped us be who we are. But please go to City of Basketball Love. Check us out. Uh, we've been putting out coverage now for 11 seasons, and we're not stopping anytime soon. Josh Furlan, our halftime guest. We'll be back with second half action momentarily. Thanks, Bob. My name is Annie Bartos, and I'm a member of the Penfield hockey team. When I was a kid, I lost my twin brother Jack to childhood cancer, and I started Golden September, a childhood cancer awareness project to help raise awareness and funds for childhood cancer. My goal is not to raise awareness just in September, but to grow gold year round. In 2021, multiple other field hockey teams decided to step up, fight childhood cancer. And this year, some teams here at Penn are also joining me to help grow gold. In 2021 alone, we were able to raise over a million dollars for childhood cancer. Now I'm asking you in your team, club, organization, and school to step up and help grow gold. We might be on all different teams, but at the end of the day, we're on one team to help our kids survive and thrive. So thank you for helping me grow gold to beat childhood cancer. We are halfway to a classic here tonight. Roman Catholic. Newman Garrett, Philadelphia Catholic League final. Bob Long, Huck Palmer here as you take a look at some of the highlights that got us to this point. And it's a 24-18 lead. 
for the Kaolites. A look at Stefan Ashley Wright, the freshman. What role will he play in the second half? Well, Kafik Myers is back, and that, that's a great sign for Newman because they, they definitely need him on the court. Remember, Myers, who's been banged up over the course of the year, was dinged up late in that first half. Huck, you acknowledged and noticed that he was in some pain? I did, and he came out a little late, too, from the, well, the whole team came out late. Uh, Carl must have had a nice little heart-to-heart -heart with him, but Myers came out especially late. Rob Wright, that was halfway down from three. Big offensive rebound. It's Bruce Smith. That's a great pickup right there. Right, right shot went in and out. He's going to have to keep shooting him. He's, he scores in bunches. And for Smith to dig his way in there and get a putback amongst the trees is a good sign for the Saints. Newman Gretti did not get the ball inside the three-point line there on that opening possession. Roman Catholic stays in the zone. But one... What can one of the delinquencies or issues with the zone be, Huck? That can be rebounding the basketball defensively. Newman Garetti took advantage. Finkley. Xavier Brown. And Bruce Smith inserting himself into this contest. Kafik Myers. That's way too long. He's still running a little gingerly. Does not look comfortable out there. Now Newman Garetti. They throw zone at Roman Catholic. Turnabout is fair play, and they get the steal. Neil Williams is very active. Right? Yes. That's his sweet spot. And Huckett's getting down the floor before the 2-3 zone can get set. Yes, and Wright can navigate better that way. One possession game. Two teams that love to run up and down the floor. One Zones thing if, are getting thrown at them. The one thing about the Saints team, Bob, is that they will never go away. I mean, they are a resilient bunch. Stefan Ashley Wright will replace Kafik Myers. He is ginger coming off the floor. A noticeable limp. Why so quiet is the chance. These student sections, they know each other well. Feels like they hook up here in this game every other year. In fact, yeah. the last time that a team not named Roman Catholic Newman Goretti or Archbishop Wood won a Catholic League title was 2008. That was a now shuttered North Catholic as Eric Oliver Bush puts two in. Both teams have baskets on putbacks early here in the second half, Bob. Ashley Wright, and now Amir Williams. Rob Wright with the floater. Starting to warm up a little. Big part of his game, the mid-range. He is going to Baylor next year. Well, two years from now, beg your pardon, just a junior. So the Catholic League will have to contend with him yet again. Already over 1,000 points for his career. Finkley, a deep three. It's good. He really studied that one. Great find by Brown, too. Straight on look from the top of the key. That's the Hawk connection right there. Brown with the assist. Finkley with the three. Both of them going to be St. Joe's Hawks next year. Always good to see some local kids stay, stay home. What a pass inside. That's a one-handed swipe from Wright. And Adewale cuts it back to one possession. You kind of get the sense that they're starting to warm up a little bit here, and, 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 and this second half could be uh, filled with a lot of excitement. Finkley. And Newman Gray perhaps baited him into that one. That's a deep three. That's verging on NBA range. You know, Roman does shoot the ball well from three-point range, 37%, but they're not a high-volume three-point shooting team. And I think if you get them in a game where they're shooting a high volume, I don't know if that's going to be a, you know, for, you know good fortunes for them uh, in, in, that, in that type of game plan. And, Huck, they shoot 37% from the white line, not the blue line. A lot of times in these contests, you almost set your new paradigm from the blue. That's a great point, Bob. 
3.38 to go. Nip and tuck the whole way. Right. That's a through the legs pass that could not be converted. Stefan Ashley Wright knows it. He knows that was going on the highlight reel if he knocked it down. He did. He hit one earlier. That's not really, that's not really, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got about 14 made threes this year. Uh, that's not a big part of his game. I'm, I'm sure it'll come in time. When he's playing with energy and emotion, that's when he's effective for, for such a young player. Great defensive player, too. Puts great pressure on the ball. A 1-3-1 here with a high man coming up to guard the ball handler. Case in point right there, Bob. Stefan Ashley Wright got the hand on it. 3.04 to play third quarter. Both teams, they've found what they've liked defensively. Now will the offenses adjust? Finkley was halfway down. Another good luck, just in that spilled out on him. Rob Wright for the tie, yes! Create the space, step back, knock it down, young fella. He's quite capable of getting buckets in bunches, and Roman wants a timeout. And the Newman Garetti contingent rises here at the Palestra. Only two points for Rob Wright in the first half, and he's got seven quick ones out here. And he's got that look right now. He's got that look that he wants to take over the game. One more look. Here's Wright pulling up just a couple of possessions ago. When he's going well, Bob, he, he's as efficient and as smooth as they come. The Catholic League final. It is a bucket list item. Huck, and I don't think that's saying too much. There are folks that don't live in Philadelphia, and one of the things that maybe they miss the most. You know, the, last week I had my 11-year-old my, my down here for the first time, and I, you know, he was a little apprehensive at first because he wasn't gonna be sitting with me. You know, I had my buddy with me, he was with him and his son, and uh, when we got home, he was like, that was great. I was, I can't believe it, it was, you know, it was, I, was, I had a great time, Dad. And uh, I, you know, I hope he's looking forward to coming more. And I got another little guy younger than him, I'm trying to get him down here. Um, one of the reasons he came down that night is because the younger one had a game and mom had to take him, so my older had to come with me. There he you go. No choice. There you go. Huck Palmer, a family man and the statistician for the Philadelphia Catholic League. I don't know how you find the time. I, uh, you know, well, I got these two down at the basement with me running back and forth with the, with the basket on the door and uh, <laughs> watching the games over my shoulder. So, you know, it's all, all good fun. My partner, Huck Palmer, my name's Bob Long, Penn Sports Network. Doing the production in SFBN, the live stream. We appreciate all our partners this evening, as well as the Catholic League, the administrators, the Archdiocese of Philadelphia for the foresight to do this. Sharif Jackson, how about the patience, Huck? You know, I, I, I was thinking earlier that they were not trying to really establish him early, and I think they need to. They need, need some buckets. He's quite capable of getting some buckets down there. Not exactly going to live above the rim, but he's got a wide center of gravity. He creates space where needed. And he showed that uh, right there on that, on that play there, Bobby. He was, had a wide base before he went up. He used his strength to get it, get it up over the rim. Big block. Eric Oliver Bush. Xavier Brown is bumped. Probably a pretty good foul there. If uh, Brown turns the corner there, he's either going in for a layup or he's got someone streaking down the lane. By the way, well after the whistle, but I did see our cameras got it. Heck of a finish there after the whistle by Xavier Brown. All the English you could ask for on that one. 31-29. Newman, they've come all the way back. They tied the game at 21 on a Rob Wright step back tray. Sharif Jackson, the difference with that last deuce inside. Good look for Jermai Stewart Herring. Wright with no numbers. Amir Williams, that's his spot. And you saw Wright saw him about a third of the way down the court, and he saw him, he spotted there, got deep enough to kick it out to him, 
And that's what Williams does best, shoot the corner three. It is so difficult in transition. Roman had three back. It was two on three. But your focus is stopping the ball when you have a sniper from the corner. It's a great asset to have. That's a tip that will stay here. That's going to be a tough call. Kind of looked like Sharif Jackson may have lost that on his own out of bounds. Well, he definitely bobbled it as he's going up to get the, and that prevented him from getting the shot off. I'm not sure if Adewale got a piece of it before it went out of bounds. Newman Garetti leads their first lead of the second half, and really their first lead since the first quarter. Wright creates the now, turnover. Now Wright with a steal. This time it's Bruce Smith. Yes. This is what they do. They're relentless. Ashley Wright coming into your living room, or at least ours. Hit <laughs> a double deflection on that. I'm going to have to make a note of that so when I get home and I do the stats later. Give him a deuce. So in the third quarter here, Wright has seven points. He has a steal and he has two assists on corner three. So different, two different teammates in Smith and Williams. What a game. 17 points for Newman Garetti in this quarter to just seven for Roman Catholic. You, you, you see a headliner uh, like um, Myers go out of the game and, 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 and Newman Garetti's down and you think uh, they just won't be able to you know, get back in this. And Sure enough, they do. Not surprised by it at all. And Rob Wright, the one driving the engine. Williams and Smith hitting the big triples. Xavier Brown down to seven seconds. Brown, what a catch by Oliver Bush. Still two seconds left. Sharif Jackson. There's a tip. It would count, but doesn't. Does not go down. And Newman Garetti outscores Roman Catholic by 10 here in the third stanza. Eight minutes away from yet another title, and it would be too straight for them. New McGrady's defense the last two quarters has been phenomenal. They give up 16 points in the first quarter, and I believe they've only given up 14, 15 points. <laughs> My math is pretty good, but 15 points in the last two quarters, and, and they have not given up double digits in either quarter. New McGrady starting to tighten the screws defensively. But we talked about it in the girls' game. We talked about it to open this game. There are ebbs and there are flows in high school basketball, and you know that Roman Catholic has a run. And like in the girls' game, uh, Lansdale Catholic started out really well, had a big lead. Wood came back, kind of took control by the end of the third quarter, and Lansdale was able to come back and get the game at the end. Similar situation here with uh, Roman starting out uh, hot and heavy, and then uh, Newman, Newman coming back here by the end of the third quarter and taking a lead. And in both cases, big three-point shots have yes. started to turn the tide. That's what separates the, the, like the, the, the great players from the good players is that Rob Wright struggled in the first half or and really, you know, really maybe didn't have a, a, that many opportunities, settled for some threes that didn't go. And, and in that quarter, you know, the seven, uh, at least seven points, but facilitating, playing in defense, and just leading the charge. Maybe have uh, Roman doubt themselves a little bit. Well, it's a senior class, Hawk, so I don't know that that's on the table. This is a team that knows they can do it, and it's a bunch of seniors where this is, of course, their last chance here in this building at the high school level. Xavier Brown, that's a tough shot. Not the look he wanted, and he called for the personal. That is just the first team foul against Roman Catholic in the second half. Well, the refs are definitely letting them play a little bit, and uh, it's been a clean game. There haven't been a lot of turnovers. There haven't been a lot of fouling. That's kind of the way I like it. 30-second timeout called by Chris McNesby. These games get very short here, Hawk. The later you go in these contests, of course, not playing with a shot clock here at the high school level, as we've seen at the end of several quarters, teams willing to slow things down. Well, you know, Newman Garetti is especially equipped to, to, to if, when they have a lead in the fourth quarter, they'll, they'll start running their weave out top here where they'll just run it back and forth three or four times. Now, they don't have Myers in the game right now, and, and Ashley Wright is only a freshman, but 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 the other Wright is, is tremendous. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll run that, they'll, they'll do it two, three, four possessions in a row, and often they'll get a layup out of it. 
and, and still exhaust, you know, 30 to 45, sometimes a minute off the clock. So you have to be careful. You're going to have to speed them up a little bit. I won't be surprised if Roman doesn't come out here and try to speed them up here. You know, Myers isn't in the game. Um, you know, see if they can throw the ball around a little bit and they can get out in transition. Maybe can get a few layups because the half-court set right now for Roman is not working. Two state championship caliber teams, teams that will certainly be favorites in their respective brackets. Different classifications, Newman Goretti 4A and Roman Catholic, the large school classification at the PIAA level, the 6A classification. But I think both teams would tell you that this matters the most. 100%, Bob. There's no doubt about it. There are 9,000 people in this building. It's getting ready to burst here with this fourth quarter. Who will have that championship DNA? And Roman Catholic gets the first turnover to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, that room, Newman pulled it out there. It's, it's kind of what I was talking about. You know, right handled the ball there. He, he had Williams there. He just a little bit off on that pass. There's an open three. Jermai Stewart Herring, and he is fouled in the act. Big call there on the baseline. Yeah, that's a big play right there. Herring is shooting 83% from the line, I think. He's, and he's got quite a few attempts. I think he's 88 attempts on the year, so it's not like he's, uh, you know, under 20. Oh, you can see why. He gets to the rim when he needs to. He's physical inside, great on the offensive glass, particularly for his size. His first trip to the Palestra here as a member of Roman Catholic because he transferred in. Boy, is he enjoying the Catholic League. Here we go. Uh, Roman a little 1-2-2 two, two here. Three quarters court pressure. Now here comes the double. Cutter, Great. Smith, great finish. Great look by Adewale. And he switched from right to left hand to avoid the shot blocker, Jackson. Great hands by Williams, and it's Newman Garetti basketball. Amir Williams, the length there in the corner where the space gets tight. The sideline provides the third defender. What a play. Roma's going to come out in this 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter uh, press again. And, you know, I think they, when, when they get across half quarter, if they can get Ashley Wright stuck over there, I think that's where they're going to want to have to bring the double team. There comes they can make a play. And there and you Cottrell go. Cottrell gave it away. Roman <laughs> Catholic basketball with 6-10 to play. And to his credit, Ashley Wright deflected that pass out of bounds to prevent a... Uh, you know, a little maybe a transition um, opportunity for the Kaolites. This is where the efficiency, where every possession needs to end with a good shot for both teams, really. Where championships are decided, where legends are born. The Palestra and the Catholic League boys title game. Anthony Finkley. Corner three. Nobody getting to the offensive glass for Roman Catholic. Perhaps a bit of a settle. Sharif Jackson Huck was inside calling for the basketball, but Sultan Adewale working hard in the defensive post. I think the last basket Roman has is, 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 is look at Finkley there. Anthony Finkley says no. With authority. Yeah, so the last basket Roman has scored was, was dumped. It's, it's hard to get him into the ball, uh, get him the ball against his zone there. they got to work the middle of the paint, though, and, and try to get a good look, and then maybe a kick out from there. Rob Wright into a triple team, and they call the foul. Roman Catholic wants a jump ball. Great look from our baseline cam. Only four fouls this half. And neither team in any foul trouble at this point. In fact, you could get to a situation late in the contest where you have to give two, three, even four fouls. I was just thinking that. Stefan Ashley Wright guarded by Robert Cottrell. 
It's a one possession game. Newman Garetti looking to win yet again at the Palestra. Won last year, including the District 12 title and the PIAA state title to accompany a Philadelphia Catholic League title. That's referred to as the Triple Crown. And they had one step in the right direction. Foul called against Finkley. Finkley doesn't disagree, she nodded his he uh, head in approval. Certainly, good look there on the replay. Little and again, that's okay. Three team fouls against Roman Catholic. Yeah, you try to poke it away from behind there, you poke it away, it goes to your teammate, then maybe you get a, like, you know, throw down the court and get a layup out of it. Right, that's a tough shot. Halfway down and Xavier Brown rises high. Newman does a good job of getting back. Xavier Brown, good luck. Robert Cottrell got to a great spot. And here's Bruce Smith up the floor. Smith doesn't have numbers, adroitly spins this one back. That's a senior there, Bruce Smith, Huck. Making that play, recognizing he's not the primary ball handler. He doesn't have the numbers. Let's put it in the star junior's hands. Who gets to the rim and is blocked? Halawale! An he, offensive rebound in two. He was due for one of those. It's what he does best. Back to Bruce Smith. You know, he was a rotation member last year, and, it, he, you know, he bided his time in a, in a great program. Newman does this all the time. They'll have a kid that'll, you know, become a starter or a sixth man by the time he's senior, and he really didn't play that much heading into his senior year, and, and, and they always seem to contribute. Back to that last play there as Jackson makes a heck of a play, has to come up and guard Rob Wright. Did get a piece of it, but what happens is it never gets to the rim. It doesn't come off the rim, and Ottawale is the one first to it. Just a heck of a play by the Newman Garetti star. Yes, and, and you see there Jackson there, who, who's somewhat in position maybe to grab the rebound, but because he went off the block to try to block the shot, or got, he got the piece of it, he didn't have any balance behind him. And, and then Ottawale just swooped in with, the whole, you know, with all the momentum, went up over him, got him, and he had no one in front of him. He laid it off the glass rather easily. Roman Catholic, Philadelphia Catholic League champions in 2015 and 2016 under Chris McNesby, the head man at Roman Catholic. Then he took a leave. He decided he was going to spend more time with his family. Matt Griffin came in. He's a big basketball name here in Philadelphia. He won Catholic League titles with Roman Catholic in 2018 and 2019. And that's it. That's the last title. It's not that long ago, no. but for Roman Catholic, maybe it is. And Chris McNesby has a chance to win yet another one here tonight. Well, uh, Newman, at least Newman and Roman have been represented the Catholic League in the Catholic League Championship. At least one of them have been in the Catholic League Championship since 2008. And that was that aforementioned North Catholic team that won. That's the last team not named Newman Garetti, Roman Catholic, and Archbishop Wood to actually win. A title. Coach Aragal, 25 seasons at the helm over there, and he's 12 and 5 in this game. It's an incredible number. Six straight titles from 2009 to 2014. Also, a 63 game winning streak in the league encompassed some of that span. Jackson, an offensive rebound, almost handed it to Sultan Hadawale. Thought better of it. <laughs> Newman Garetti champions in 2020. That was right before the world shut down. And then 2022. Contact with no call. Xavier Brown couldn't get it over the rim. Looked like Williams got a piece of that, and Ottawa cleaned up the, re the mess. Miscommunication. Un uncharacteristic turnover there for the Saints. Like I said earlier, they only average eight and a half turnovers a game. They really know how to take care of the ball. It, it's, it's the, in my opinion, the, what, what makes them a great team. It's, it's the best attribute they have is that they take care of the ball and they force turnovers. An early but imperative possession for Roman Catholic. Got to get a good look. Down by five. 3-10 to go in a game without a shot clock, as we all know. Newman Garetti will slow down Roman Catholic by throwing the zone at him. It's been every possession here in the second half. Xavier Brown. What a tough shot. A senior. Great Making finish. Good. Great finish. And it drew some contact here, too. Let them play. That's a will shot right there. 
willing it above the rim and through the cup. Here's the weave I was telling you about earlier. Brown almost read that. Now it gets on the floor. Xavier Brown thought he had a steal. The foul call. That is the fourth team foul against Roman Catholic. Nobody in any foul trouble of note. 2.31 to go. A game played in the 30s. That was his shot, Huck. It's a shot. A little quick off the pass there, but he, you know, he was open, and you know, he's made a lot of those this year. That's a great look and a foul call. Sultan Adewale. That's certainly a good call there, but not a bad foul because Sharif Jackson had set up inside, had good position. He did, and I didn't, I didn't see the double team coming or wasn't ready to come at least. Here's where the chess master, Chris McNesby, can he come up with something out of the baseline out of bounds? It's a pretty good look. A deep three. Four ticks on the rim. Even the soft rims here at the pleasure could wheel that in. Xavier Brown has tied it. Five straight for the senior. A man who many thought could be the MVP this year. He's looking for his championship moment. I think, he, I think he's been an MVP candidate for at least two years, if not three. It's an open three for Bruce Smith. There's the answer. Big finish. Big shot by the senior. Shot it with confidence, too. Newman Goretti back into that zone. 2-3. Finkley. Xavier Brown, Oliver Bush, and Finkley, it's open for Brown. That's well short, a lot of contact. Here comes Newman Goretti, Amir Williams. Follow is good for Bruce Smith, five point lead. Tremendous pass by the freshman and Bruce Smith is there once again. And a foul is gonna be called against Newman Goretti, perhaps a bailout, Xavier Brown a little out of control. Certainly there was contact there, but he went down on his own. Fourth team foul against Newman Goretti. Both teams with two fouls to give. Timeout, Chris McNesby. It's going to be a huge possession coming out of the timeout for Roman. Bruce Smith with the last five, Huck. And I think he had a, maybe he had an early three, or an early basket. He did. Um, and then wasn't hurt. Well, that's not really his game. He's only going to give you seven or eight points a game. He does a lot of the little things, has many intangibles. Uh, he contributes in many ways. Uh, uh, you know, shows you there that in, in a given moment, he can, he can provide some of the scoring. And on that last one, it's just the hustle to get down the floor. Amir Williams was over the top. A lot of guys would not get down that floor uh, in 94. A lot of kids will stop and ball watch there and it's expecting it to go in. And he, he went right to the rim and... Was, it was quickest off the floor, and, and, the, and the pullback was pretty easy for him. So now out of the timeout, you're Chris McNesby. We're looking inside that huddle. Certainly Newman Goretti fans thrilled and excited with the last two minutes. But what is your call coming out of the Roman Catholic huddle? Well, I guess they're going to get the ball in Brown's hands. They're going to help try uh, have him create, maybe slash into the basket. Uh, if he can slitter his way in, maybe get up to the rim. If not, I could see, you know, if they collapse on him, he's going he's to throw it back out, maybe to an open look. I'd be on the lookout for an, uh, a Finkley top of the key three, something like that. Maybe Cottrell over there. He, they might leave him alone if he's out there. Remember also that make or miss, Roman Catholic has to think about the only four team fouls that they have in the second half. So they'll have to foul three times to get Newman and, ready to and, the line. And you need to save that time. So you need to be aggressive. Go for steals. And see, maybe, you get, maybe you get one and, and, and you score off of it. And you know what? It's not uh, Newman's. You know, we saw last week in the semifinals. They're not a strong foul shooting team. Only 63% as a team, and you get them in the one on ones in a tight game. You know, uh, you, you still have a chance uh, with a couple misses there. Just one timeout remains for Roman Catholic as well. So if they get down, say three possessions, they can only stop the clock one more time. And at the high school level, ball going through the cylinder doesn't stop it. Great. Rob Wright pulls it down. They tried to give the foul. Now Wright all the way to the hoop. And now the foul is called. It's a two-shot foul. 
Rob liked he right loved that matchup right there. So you know what? Yeah, we are off five. And we're going, you know, and we, we should be holding a ball, but he saw a scoring opportunity. He, he, he's got great body control. He knows how to draw fouls. Now he's going to shoot two. Finkley did a good job going straight up there. Perhaps a little late come down with that left arm was the reason for the call. Rob Wright, 70% from the line this year. And he's their best foul shooter. And he missed both. Roman Catholic, down five. 44 seconds left. Finkley, he got all the way to the hoop. And an offensive, a beggar for a defensive rebound, a foul called. Sharif Jackson was in amongst the trees there on the offensive glass, couldn't grab it, and Rob Wright, before you could even say anything, boom, he was gone. He was gone. Well, he's... <laughs> He saw open floor ahead of him, and, and that's his strength. And he said, you know, I'm taking it. If I can get the layup, I'm going to go take it. 34 seconds left now. 16 fouls against Roman Catholic. Next foul will send Newman Garetti to the line. If you can do it, Kafik Myers comes into the game right at 50%. Yes. I don't know if he'll be on the floor. Well, Bob, he hasn't played. I know he, he started the second half. He, yep. he was running around gingerly. Uh, he hasn't been back since. So, I, I mean, one would have to assume that you know, he's not available right now. We'll see what they break the huddle with. Roman Catholic certainly still will go for an initial steal, potentially a double team. But you don't have that much time to wait. No, I would probably uh, force the ball out of Wright's hands. I mean, I've seen him in many games, you know, at the end, just ice games. Uh, he's not a great foul shooter, but he's, he, he, can, he can get on a roll. And, you know, I've seen him go like eight, eight out of nine and nine out of 11 late in games to, to, to push out lead. So you could deny him the ball, and then I'm found the, one of those other four first, first chance I get. Those last two replays that you saw were the last five points scored. After it, the game was tied, Eric Oliver Bush fouls Rob Wright. Huck. Games are won and lost at the front end, my friend. They are. And this, a big one here for a 70% foul shooter. But if I'm the Saints, there's nobody else I'd rather have on the line. And in fact, I don't think number two is close. He missed two the last time to the stripe. That time, no problem. This is a huge uh, shot right here because it'll make it a three possession game if it goes in with only 33 seconds left and one timeout. Two of two. Roman Catholic can only stop the clock one more time. Finkley for three. Gotta go and it does. So they let the clock run. And now Newman Garetti gets it in. Foul is called. Right to the line again for the front end of the one and one. Well, that's exactly what Roman Catholic needed. A quick shot, a three. Still a four point contest, now they need a miss. They save that timeout as well. You yes. said it ad nauseum, Huck, but clock will not stop, even in the last minute of the game on a made basket at the high school level. Bright's been clean on his last three attempts. If I'm lip reading, Carl Aragel, I think, is looking to call a timeout on a make here. And there is the timeout. 20 seconds left. Six point game. Given what we just talked about with the clock and the status of the high school game where it doesn't stop after the made basket, I do think it has to be three here from Roman Catholic. I agree, Bob. You know, they, the Romans are going to come down, hopefully get a good shot. If they knock down a three, they call the timeout. It's, you know, 48-45. They're down three. Maybe they get a steal off the timeout. Maybe they foul. They miss, and they have a chance to maybe come down and tie it. Uh, getting a two here probably does them no good with, with, with like you said, the lack of timeouts. It would be three in the last four years for Newman Garetti. It would be yet another notch in the belt 
and a chance to win that triple crown yet again. Catholic League District state title would be that man's 13th state title. Which, the 13th Catholic League title, right? I beg your pardon, Catholic League. Brown, that's a tough shot. It was blocked, but he was fouled in the act of shooting. Bruce Smith cannot believe it. From here, it looked like there was some contact. Here's why that's important. Everything we just said about a made basket and the clock running, throw it out the window. Now they can save that timeout, but they're not. Wow. Now that, now that is interesting. It is because if Brown can go there and knock it down, 48-45, you got 15, just under 15 ticks left. Clock's not moving. You can, you know, you can set your defense up on the, um, you know, during the foul shooting. So Roman Catholic elects to take the timeout on a stop clock situation. I recognize you got to set things up and try to get a steal. Chris McNesby, he is certainly an experienced well, enough coach to know what to do in these scenarios. He, he's won a lot more high school games than I have at this level. There's no doubt about that. So, so now Xavier Brown certainly has to go hit all three. Roman Catholic will need a steal. You know, Brown's Still, an 80 percenter. He yeah, is an 80 percenter. He's an 80 percenter, but these, these are tough These are tough foul shots right here. Also, eight team fouls against Roman Catholic. So if they do foul in the next inbound, still just the front end of the one and one coming up. And they have to do everything in their power to deny Wright the ball. He's just made his last four. I, I, I do not, I mean, you have to double, like I wouldn't even put somebody on the ball maybe if you're gonna invite it to somebody else and uh, and foul that and foul that player. It right. all starts with the foul shots, Huck. Yes, it does. A young man who's dreamed about these moments, 1,000 point score, one of just 22 in Roman Catholic history. Played as a freshman, started as a sophomore, was the leader his junior and now senior seasons. He's had a tremendous career. Love his demeanor on the court, he's so poised, tough kid. This is the big one. He got all three. And ever money. 15 seconds left. One possession game. Ashley Wright is fouled. Put Finkley on skates. And here's the storyline. Rob Wright, one of the league's best. His brother Stefan Ashley Wright gives him an embrace as Ashley Wright heads to the free throw line. A freshman, a chance to essentially ice it. One and one, Huck, games are won and lost right here. 69%, but you know, not, not a whole lot of attempts. No good. Xavier Brown for the tie. Rob Wright is fouled with six seconds left. A little quick, but who else would you rather have taken the shot? A little quick. He had a clean look, a little bit from distance, though. Unfortunately, though, like if you're going to miss there, you had nobody underneath to get an offensive rebound and maybe a kick back out. Ten team fouls. Double bonus time. Rob Wright needs to hit one of two. Can the junior do it again? And that's a two-shot foul. It'll be interesting to see if, if he does miss this, if uh, Newman will elect a foul. Well, they should. They only have five team fouls. They get, a, they get a free one. Always foul up three. That is no good. Five seconds left. Xavier Brown. This is for the tie. Unbelievable. And we are going to overtime. The senior doesn't want to go home.
I, Bob, I saw Newman's bench trying to, and some of the assistants imploring to take one there. Uh, six seconds. They only have five team fouls. Look at the purple wave up there. Unbelievable. They this, can't believe it. This is Catholic League basketball. This is why this place is special, Bob. The bank is open. Clean off the glass, too. Like the dock back in the day. We have extra basketball here tonight. This should go no other way. The two best programs in this city's fabled history. The two best programs that the Catholic League has to offer this year. I'm playing the best game we've seen all season. I'm still shocked that they did not foul there coming up the court. Xavier Brown, he has been the guy taking just about every shot down the stretch. Some have gone, some have not, but he's taken every shot confidently, and he knew it was his time. I think he hit a three early. I, I bet you in between that one and, and the one he just tied the game up, he probably has five or six mixes from the arc. From the arc. It's not been a great shooting night for him. It's not been a great shooting night for either team, but it's been a hard fought, fought game, and it's been a lot of passion out there. Why not? Four more minutes. It's a game we'll be talking about for years and years to come. What a tremendous job by the Philadelphia Catholic League and the Archdiocese of Philadelphia for putting this game on stream. History is being captured here tonight to watch here this evening and to enjoy for years to come. Bob, I have to go back into the archives, but I, I'm, it's very unlikely that a team has experienced two buzzer beaters in back-to-back -back games at the Palestra. To send it to overtime. To send it to overtime, correct. That's what happened with Newman Goretti. A putback by West Catholic sent the semifinal to overtime. A banked three by Xavier Brown sends this one here tonight. Xavier Brown wants it back. Jermai Stewart herring for three. A revelation from the corner. A big time player. The second leading scorer all year for Roman Catholic. Kaolites are seizing it, that, that momentum. Bruce Smith, no. He'll get it back. Playing off two feet. What a feed inside. Out of Wale. Give him an offensive rebound and two points. Said it a few times tonight. The kid is relentless. He's off the ground two times before everybody else is up off once. Catholic League Boys Final. Penn Sports Network. Streaming on SFBN. Here we go. It's a steal. Right without numbers. So good from that spot. And now numbers. It's Finkley flanking Stuart Herring. Adewale running harder than anyone else back down the floor. He was definitely a deterrent there. Good smart move by Finkley. That's not really his game going up over people. What a precursor to the madness that is March. Districts and then PIAA state playoffs to follow, but this is the here and now, and this is all anybody can think about. It's Philadelphia Catholic League boys title on the line, Huck. And we're halfway through the overtime here. The Roman holding a one point lead. Xavier Brown, they're counting him off. Timeout. Chris McNesby was on the left hip. I'll tell you this about Brown. I've noticed this all year. No one has court awareness like he does. He comes so close sometimes to hitting the midline when he's out here and he's out here getting pressure. He never does it. I've seen it countless times this year. The kid's just amazing at it. And again, I think that five-second call was maybe a half second from coming. I mean, perhaps he had advanced it far enough. I myself think that at times that rule is overcalled, and I think that count was still happening. Chris McNesby was on the left hip of Daryl Sterling, a tremendous official here tonight, and called that timeout before that fifth arm bar came out. Well, you'll see that. You'll see coaches right there on the hip of the referee uh, in situations like that. Uh, they, you know, they got him with a five-second call earlier in the game. That is the only timeout allocated to Roman Catholic for the overtime period, so they are back to no timeouts. 
As a result, you can say McNesby, he knew he needed that one. And he needed it there to keep that possession. Yeah, possession's critical. You have a lead, you want to definitely get a shot off. You want to try to increase that lead, you know? Get it up to three, possibly uh, get it up to four. Roman late to break the huddle. Newman Goretti out on the floor. Yeah, this timeout also bifurcates the possession in a lot of ways as well. They can come out deliberate to start this out of bounds situation here. And Newman can play, uh, Newman Goretti can be can be aggressive here. They only have the five team foul, so if they, they pick one up, you know, with a little aggression, uh, that's uh, no harm. Does Roman Catholic again go deliberate? Or do they look for one of those bigs inside? Sharif Jackson, perhaps Jeremiah Stewart Herring, or does the ball stay right here? With Xavier Brown, the heart and soul of this Roman Catholic team. Finkley. Stefan Ashley Wright trying to deny Xavier Brown the ball. Got to a good spot. Finkley. There is Eric Oliver Bush. It's a three-point lead. Give it out away, a little take, a taste of his own medicine there. It was so deep, and that ball barely ticked the rim. That basically took it right down to what him. What a pass. Adewale off the feed from Rob Wright. Makes a living down there. And you have to draw that second defender to him because he's so good at finishing in the lane. Finkley, great luck. And Stuart Herring pulls it back. 55 seconds left, and Roman Catholic does not have to release the basketball hawk. He was very close to the half-court strike. Now Bruce is trying to give the foul, I think. Hasn't been called. 40 seconds left, and now he gives it. One foul to give. Now 16 fouls, and the next foul would send Roman Catholic to the line. And the clear choice is Sharif Jackson. 49% from the free throw line on the year. Finkley, 72. Oliver Bush, 76. Xavier Brown on your screen, 80%. And Jeremiah Stewart Herring is 84% from the line. Here we go, they're gonna dust this one off. Stefan Ashley Wright and Xavier Brown got the arms tied. Well, the Saints are trying to deny him the ball and that's wise. What a great job by Roman Catholic to get the ball into the hands of their playmaker, of their rock at the point guard position. 31 seconds to play. And he stepped on the half court stripe. <laughs> the freshman makes the stop. Stephon Ashley Wright, on ball defender, big time. I guess I jinxed him. There's another look right at the tail end there. Time out. Play with fire a little too close there. It was clearly on the line. Newman Gretti still has one timeout remaining. So Newman Goretti here. Remember, they have just the six team fouls. End of game situation tells you here, Huck, of course you're not going to rush. You want to get a good shot, but you do want to take the shot before the last second. For one yeah. reason about, hey, trying to get a putback. But if not, you still have the opportunity. And here's a great look. Oh, what an incredible job by our production and camera staff here yeah, They've tonight. been great all night. They've been on top of it. Great feed, too. Beautiful picture. But a standpoint of if you miss Newman Goretti in the offensive half court, you want to be able to foul, send Roman Catholic to the line. They can't shoot two free throws and make it a two-possession game. So you look to get something early, maybe in the first 10 to 12 seconds. Right. The game's not tied. You're down one. You, you, you know, you want to get a good shot. You want to, you know, work your way into a good shot. But you don't want to work it down to where it's six, five seconds. And then you leave yourself, no, you know, no margin for error. Roman Catholic now set to exit the timeout. They'll come out on defense, Newman Goretti with the offensive possession. 
Bob, I don't think anybody's left. Why would they? And most of them are standing. It's a one-point lead for Roman Catholic. Newman Garetti can change that. Rob Wright with the lob. And that's going to be basket interference. That's basket interference. A wonderful call. A wonderful call by Daryl Sterling. Watch this. He's going to go up, grab the rim, and while he's pulling it down, he grabs it on the other side. An excellent camera angle and a great call by Sterling. Great call. And, that, and, and Williams makes corner threes, and he catches lobs along the baseline. And, and, and that was a great play they drew up there. Uh, they just didn't execute it. It was so close to being executed, though. Roman does not have any timeouts. Caught in the corner. Now Finkley is fouled. 13 seconds left. Finkley, a 72% foul shooter. And Huck, even in overtime, games are won and lost at the front end. Yes, they are. Finkley, I don't think he's been on the line tonight. And he's not somebody who gets to the line a lot. Now with a second made free throw, do you think about fouling up three? Newman Garetti did not do that with six seconds left. Xavier Brown banked in a three at the horn, and that's why we're here playing right now. Finkley again. Carbon copy the first one. Front rimmed it off the glass, drops. It's Rob Wright, and a timeout is called with 10 seconds left. Who will it be, Huck? Well, I think you got to go with Wright. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to have an opportunity for him to uh, play make and, and get something to the corner to either Smith or Williams because he's going to have to get into shooting position if he's going to take the shot. I, I expect Roman to extend their, uh, extend their defense a little bit, kind of take him away, maybe deny him the ball. It would be interesting if Newman can get it to him. And if they can't, Maybe they have something uh, secondary coming off, coming off the uh, corner there for, for Williams. I do think if the clock can get down under six or maybe five, and if somebody turns their back, the ball handler, to the basket, I think Roman Catholic does try to take the foul at that point. Double bonus time the rest of the way for Newman Garetti. They, they might do that. I mean, sometimes I think high school coaches are hesitant to do that because you are, you are, you know, you are coaching kids, and, and the last thing you want is for someone to get a shot off and get fouled. And then next, you know, I saw it happen earlier in the year when West Catholic played Ryan. Um, West, West committed, tried to commit a foul, uh, and, and he got the shot off Darren Williams. He missed it, and then he went to the line with, like, 2.3 seconds left and, and made three and sent to overtime, and Ryan went on to win that game. So it, it's, it's a philosophy thing. I don't know what Coach McNesby's uh, philosophy is on this play. Uh, it's definitely an option. Here we go, it's a three-point contest. Finkley with the steal. Now Newman Garetti, second life there. Dangerous pass. Well, a key one second comes off the clock. Here's Wright. They try to give the foul. They're going to wave off the shot. They waved it off. Again, that's Daryl Sterling. And he has been confident in his calls here tonight. I think the grab did become, did come right there before he goes into the shooting motion. That's I a agree. great call. I, that's not a shooting foul. I think he fouled him before that, too. <laughs> On the strip attempt, yep. Be interested if he makes the first one if they go for the miss here with Ottawale being so adept at getting offensive rebounds. Now I think you have to think about missing it. And you got to throw it back out. I mean, if you get a clean offensive rebound, you'll have an opportunity. So hard to pull off, though. Mm. It has to hit the rim. It did not. 
Roman Catholic basketball with 4.2 seconds left. New McGretti has to give the foul immediately. Xavier Brown dribbles to the corner and he's fouled. A 1.1 seconds comes off the clock. And one free throw would just about do it. Still in the single bonus. And a miss here could create a half court opportunity. No timeouts remain for either team. Interesting that they don't have anybody on the line there. I mean, at least maybe create a little interference on a miss on a miss foul shot. Xavier Brown is looking for his first Philadelphia Catholic League championship. That's X for Xavier Brown. That's X for the X-Man. Newman Garetti, one final heave, and the hubcap is coming back yeah. to Broad and Vine. Roman Catholic, Philadelphia Catholic League champions. And they can't keep the students off the floor. Our camera folks have to be careful there, first and foremost. A joyous celebration on the center of the palestra floor. I've seen this happen before, Bob. They'll clear them off pretty quick. I just saw a shoe go up in the air. Now people are starting to throw things from the stands, and that's never good. A look at Newman Garetti as they walk off the floor. Carl Aragale denied his 13th Catholic League title. Chris McNesby gets his first Catholic League title since he returned to the program a few years ago. His third title since 2015. And considering how, you know, in the league going, what they were facing, it's, it's you know, those last few minutes, pretty improbable the way it ended in regulation. Amazing sequence there. They will have to clear off this court storming here at the Palestra, and then they'll cut down the nets, and we will keep you here for that on the Philadelphia Catholic League Boys Championship broadcast produced by the Penn Sports Network and streamed through the Sports Fan Base Network. Bob Long, Hawk Palmer, what a night. Huck, you deserve to be here, my friend, for all you do for the league. We've had the thrill of doing games together over the years. I'm honored to be here and honored to be sitting next to you. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the pleasure is all mine, uh, Bob. I really appreciate you extending uh, an invitation for me to come down here and, and, and partner with you. You do a great job for, for sports in our area, football, basketball, baseball. You, you, you dabble in lacrosse. You do it all. Um, the last few years, you, you, you come around and, like, Every now and then, I'll just throw the Bob Long in the YouTube, Google, in, in, in the search engine, and something good comes up, always comes up. And we really appreciate what you do for us. Look at Sharif Jackson. What a game for him, and what a game for this Roman Catholic team. Champions here in 2022-2023. Xavier Brown just come, come, uh, is over here by us. You know, I'm really happy for that kid. That kid's had a great, great career. That's Jeremiah Stewart, Herring with the ball in his hands as well, celebrating with that purple wave. These are the nights you remember. These are the games of legends. Fantastic experience. Always make it a point to get down here. When, <laughs> helping you out this year, Bob, doing the stats last week. Front row seat. Best basketball this state has to offer. Robert Cottrell got in on the action. There's Eric Oliver Bush and Anthony Finkley. Finkley going to St. Joseph's University next year. And there's some Roman Catholic faithful still hanging around. You just don't want to go home. There's a lot of purple in that court. And now they'll shift some of those fans and shimmy them up the stairs. Well, we had a girls game where Olivia Bacella 
hit the game winner with mere seconds to go from NBA range. And She's then you had Xavier Brown for not not much closer, candidly. That was nearly NBA range as well with the bank with to the send bank. us to overtime. And that's the only reason that Roman Catholic is going to hoist that hubcap here tonight. The only reason that the game even made it to overtime. I, I was I was speechless when that, when that shot got off, being that they had a foul to give um, and they didn't use it. It looked like the coaches over there were telling them to use it, but you know, they're, they're kids, and, and sometimes the message doesn't get to them, and, and Brown made a big play, and he's been making big plays all year, and he's been making big plays his entire career. Really happy for him. A word quickly about vision as well, and I'm talking about vision of Danny DiBerardinas, Jake Surface, the folks involved with the Philadelphia Catholic League. Stephen Haug from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. This has been a long time coming, and by this I mean broadcasting these games live and providing an outlet for people to see it. Yeah, I, I get it, right? We're, we're charging, there is a value to this, and there's a lot of people that want to watch this game, and it's a big event for this league. Well, like the, you know, I saw the, on Twitter earlier today that, the, that the, the games were sold out, and so not everybody who wants to see the game could had that opportunity. Having the ball, bro uh, the game broadcasted like this gives gives people to watch it from home. And it's for tonight, and it's for history. History was made here tonight. People will be talking 40 years from now about the night that Xavier Brown, looking for his first Philadelphia Catholic League title in a Roman Catholic uniform, came down the floor with six seconds left and banked it in to send us to overtime. And rather than a grainy cell phone video or something from the baseline, here's what we have. We have Bob Long and Huck Palmer, Penn Sports Network and SFBN bringing you a phenomenal, professional broadcast. Well, Bob, I mean, I feel like I'm still learning a little bit, but, you know, you're, you're guiding me along the way, and I really appreciate that. I had a lot of fun doing this, uh, watching these kids play. I've been watching them all year, typically from my desk down in the basement off the <laughs> computer, but this is a, a little bit different vantage point, and, and, and it was awesome. It was, I'd, I'd rather be nowhere else. Well, when I say professional, of course, I mean the fact that we have a wonderful, experienced Penn staff, four cameras, baseline views. Xavier Brown. It's you know I recognize it. Time. I mean, I, the, the Penn game was on TV the, the other week, and it was the same. It was like the same, uh, the same exact thing we're watching here off the screen. Anthony Finkley. Teammates now and teammates next year. Robert Cottrell. Jermaine Stewart Herring, boy, is he happy he came to Broad and Vine this year. What an addition he has been. Sharif Jackson, just a sophomore, a big part of the future here at Roman Catholic. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's only going to get better. Eric Oliver Bush has got a hand on it there. They don't win this Catholic League title without his on-ball defense. He's been providing that all year. He accepted his role and, and, he, and he perfected it throughout the season. Well, this is a culmination. I talked about it at halftime with Josh Verlin, City of Basketball Love. Yes, these are the two teams that remain and these are the emotions that come from a championship like this. But it's also a culmination. There were 14 talented teams in the league this year. What is your story of the 2022-2023 Philadelphia Catholic League season? You know what? I didn't know what to expect with, with Roman coming in uh, this season. You know, I know they lost some kids last year, and, and they, they received a couple transfers, and, and there was a lot of unknown with them. But you know what? I'll tell you what. From day one, they've been a great team. They've been a great team. And I thought coming into this game, they were probably a little bit a little bit better than um, – than the Saints, uh, and, and they were. Tonight they were a little bit better. Great league, though, Bob. You're right. They're, you know, they're, it's, it's, it's 10, 10, 11 teams could have, could have been here at, uh, at the semifinals. But I do think the two best teams were here um, tonight. Um, no disrespect to, to West Catholic and Archbishop Wood, Archbishop Ryan. These two teams were probably a little bit better. And, I, and hopefully they can make deep runs at the state tournament. And those city games will be starting tomorrow, some of those playing games, all the way through Friday. That's right. In fact, our 
color analyst from the girls game, Andrea Peterson, has a game, I believe, tomorrow as well. There's girls some, getting started right away. There's some city championship games that are going to be played at the 2A, I mean the 3A to 4A to 5A, 6A level, and then there's some uh, seeding games as well. So the stats aren't done. I have a few more weeks left. <laughs> Keep up the great work. This league could not do it without you. Accretive to our broadcast, accretive to the coaches and teams. Not every league has somebody like Huck Palmer. I'm just happy to be part of it and, and just um, and do something that I enjoy doing. I love basketball. I love watching the game. I love analyzing players. Uh, I, love, I love working with every single coach in the league, um, the ADs. Um, doing something I love to do and, and, and providing, I think, a service that, it, that, it, that they appreciate and um, has a lot of value in it. There's that team picture. Means that the net's being cut down not far away. <clears throat> Tough to grab teammates that might have been lingering elsewhere. Xavier Brown, he's the one with two hands on that hubcap. I doubt he wants to let it go. What do you say, Hawk? Same time next year? I'm in. <laughs> I highly doubt that the league takes a look at what we did here tonight. Thanks to Penn Sports Network, SFBN as well. And thinks, eh, well, didn't work. <laughs> I think uh, they're going to be happy with the product. And again, you mentioned it being sold out. It's going to sell out quicker every year. Because when you come here for the first time, you want to come back. Absolutely. You don't want to relinquish your spot. And uh, capacity doesn't go anywhere. Capacity stays the same. It, it, you know, back when I was younger, it kind of reminds me of, you know, it, the place is full is when the, when the big five was, like, in its heyday. And... and they would be throwing the streamers out in the, out in the court. And, and a lot of city kids were staying home and playing at St. Joe's and Temple and Villanova. And, and, and those games were just, I used to come down here as a kid and um, in, in a packed house. And, and, and you don't really get that anymore at the college level. So for two nights out of the year, we get it here at the high school level. And, and, and it's special and it's unique. And, and, and the people should appreciate it and should want to be part of it. That was Robert Cottrell, the junior guard cutting down the nets, unabashed, shooting it from distance over the course of the year. That's Bryce Hillman. Hillman, a freshman guard at 6'1", 175 pounds, a guy who will be part of the future. Got some spot duty this year. I like what I saw from him. This is Sammy Watkins. This is uh, Sharif's younger brother, who was, who was injured most of the year. Uh, I'm sorry, Sammy Jackson, um, injured for most of the year, but I, I hear he has a bright future as well. And being here in these moments, even if you didn't play in the game, it's something where you have the opportunity to learn from this. And just being on the bench, you know what it's like. There's no way to really recreate the atmosphere anywhere else. It's gonna help these guys. And, and Roman has that goal every year to get back to the palestra. And more times than not, they accomplish that goal. Here's a sophomore, Sebastian Edwards. I like that kid. I, I've seen him play a little bit. He probably of all the reserves, probably after Felder, probably played the most. I, I think he's got a he's got some ability. And this is Will Felder, as you mentioned. Very good football player. He's a, I think he's a highly recruited defensive back, only a sophomore. And anytime anybody's in foul trouble, again, it's basically one deep going to Cottrell. When anything beyond that happens, it's been Will Felder giving key minutes. Well, made a key bucket in the semifinal. Right, not to get too far ahead of us. Roman does have three transfers, and they are uh, all juniors and above. So I'm not sure exactly who is going to be eligible for the state playoff run. And if one or two or all of them are not, then some of these kids are going to have to play. That is getting a little bit ahead of yourself, but you're absolutely right. It's consideration. That's Sharif Jackson, son of Philadelphia great Mark Jackson. How good has this guy been? Jermai Stewart, Harry. Great year. 13 and a half points per contest. 
really did damage on the glass here at the Palestra. And primarily the offensive glass. Big part of the reason they were even here tonight. He had more offensive rebounds on the year than defensive rebounds. Eric Oliver Bush, the transfer from Trenton Catholic. He gets a chance to cut the twine here at Roman Catholic. And this really is a culmination for these guys. This is why you come to a place like Roman Catholic, to play in big games at big venues and add to the storied lineage on the, Broad and Vine. The feeling these kids must have of getting up on that ladder and, and, and cutting down a little piece of rope and, and you know, going to put that in their pocket and put it somewhere safe and, and, and at home. It, it's going to last, that memory is going to last a lifetime. <laughs> Anthony Finkley with the WWE championship belt. I saw that belt making its way through the student section throughout the game. The belt has some miles on it. <laughs> A great look at the roof here at the Palestra. We rise high here. Early 1900s, this building was erected and has hosted big games ever since. This place is terrific. A couple years ago, I brought, other than coming down for these games, I brought my son down to watch a Penn Harvard game on a Friday night. And both those teams were at the top of the conference and sat back there with the Quaker. It was great. Here he is. He'll be the Philadelphia Catholic League championship MVP. Xavier Brown and a million dollar smile as well. St. Joe's is getting a good one. A guy that you want to root for. A career that you want to follow after the fact. And I know they're not retiring numbers. The number one is certainly going to be worn by someone else at Roman Catholic, but a lineage that is deserving of a retired number. Just a couple more cuts. Chris McNesby, how sweet will this be? Won two straight. Left Roman Catholic after winning last in 2016. He won a state title last year, but this is different. Yeah, I doubt this ever gets old. Another thank you to the Penn Sports Network team. We had a team of six working with us here, Huck, to make us look and sound good. And I'll tell you, it does take about six people to make me look and sound good, so I appreciate that. I'm surprised they didn't bring a few more in to make me look good. I'm not sure if these are the managers or, or what we got going on here. <laughs> we had the shirtless individual who found his way up the ladder. Hey, good for him. Good for him. But soon enough, it'll be Chris McNesby getting up there. And I, I've long said throughout the course of this year that this was one of, if not his best, defensive team. And I think it showed tonight. Half-court defense leads to offense. Newman Garetti so difficult to turn over, and they did it. They did it when they needed to. Well, New McGrady averages 68 points a game. They held him to 52 in four extra minutes, too. I'd like to see Roman's longtime stat man, uh, Puck McKenna, get up on that ladder. That's right. He's over here in front of us. I don't know if he's going to get up there. Doubt he has interest in that. So where does that piece of nylon go, Huck? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, they, they you know might do a little plaque thing where, where and they, they kind of stick it in there. I know the big 
piece of the net will go with the trophy. Yes. And it will be Chris McNesby to do the honors. Back in the winner's circle in the Philadelphia Catholic League. A deserving champion. Great guy. Super coach. And that will just about end the proceedings here at the Philadelphia Catholic League final from the historic Palestra. A lasting image here this evening. Xavier Brown, the hero. A storybook ending for him after four years of contributing to this Roman Catholic team had yet to be in this position. And now his last minutes on the floor in Catholic League play put him at the top of the ladder, cutting down the nets. He's Huck Palmer, I am Bob Long, thanks to the Penn Sports Network crew, to SFBN for helping us with a place to stream it, the Catholic League in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia for the vision to put this together. For everyone here, this is Bob Long saying good night, Roman Catholic, your Catholic League boys champs.